Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the VFly cam switcher. This small board that weighs about half a gram is going to enable you to switch between two different FEB cameras using the radio receiver signal. This is going to be useful especially for building a cheater quad or for switching between two different FEB cameras, for example one with a lower latency than the other one or that is placed in a different angle. Inside this small bag you can find the camera switcher board, a heat shrink, silicone wires, and the user manual, which is very clear and easy to follow. In terms of dimensions, this board is very small and its other dimensions are 9.1 by 18.3 by 2.3 millimeters, and it weighs only 0.54 grams. On the right side of the cam switcher board, you can find pads for connecting the two FED cameras. So you can find over here the ground, VCC and video in one and video in two. On the center, you can find pads for selecting the signal source. So in order to switch between the different options, you need to solder the center pad with either the left or the right one. The supported signals are SBUS, DSMX, IBUS and PWM. So as far as I know, the Crossfire protocol is not supported. On the left side, you can find pads for powering the cameras. So over here, you can find the ground and then the VCC. The supported voltage is between 4.2 to 25 volts. So you can power it off directly with up to 6S Leica batteries. Over here, you can find the video out pad, which is going to be connected to your VTX. And in case you are going to use SBUS, you're going to need to connect your radio receiver to this pad over here. And if you are using either PWM, the SMX or IBUS, you're going to need to use this pad over here. The wiring diagram in the user manual is very simple and here you can see how it's going to be connected. So for example, if you're going to use SBUS, you're going to need to leave all these soldering pads unsoldered and you're going to connect your SBUS receiver to this pad over here and then from this pad, it's going to be connected to your flight controller. Now I've got everything connected and I recommend that before powering up the system to test the continuity in order to make sure that nothing is shorted. In order to test the system, I connected the Runcom MicroSwift 3 FED camera to video input number one, which is the default option. The Cadex Total V2 is connected to video input number two, and the video out is directly connected to an FED screen. You should note that if you would like to overlay the OSD on your video feed, you will need to connect the video out to the video in on your flight controller. And I also recommend to make sure that both cameras are using the same video format. So for example, if this camera is set to PAL, I also recommend that the second camera is going to be set to PAL as well. In order to switch between the cameras, you will need to configure an auxiliary switch on channel number seven, so you can see when I flip it, the channel changes its output. Now I've got everything powered up. And as you can see, we're getting the video feed from camera number one. After flipping the auxiliary switch that is set to channel seven, the camera will switch to camera number two. So as you can see, everything is working properly. So again, now it's set to camera one and now to camera two. So overall, if you're looking to switch between two video sources and your flight controller does not support it natively, I think that the VFly cam switcher is a great solution since it's pretty small, it's easy to set it up, and it costs only $7. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the VFly cam switcher, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.